Hi everyone, this is Carrick, or Jeremy Penner is known by the GoBots and Leader One. You may know me from my most recent set of poems released in completely translated whale song known as or my best-selling novel, Holy Shit, a guidebook to protecting your kids in American theme parks. Today I'm here to bring you the review or preview of the early access game Hand of Fate for the PC. Now I'll admit, originally I thought Hand of Fate was nothing more than the name of an unreleased B-side from Ike Turner. I found out this is a game that offers far more than beating people up in late night swordplay. Imagine getting stuck in Akabeth or the Ultima series character creators or the ones from Morrowind where the game asks you a series of imaginary questions to decide what kind of character you're going to play. You know those weird questions like if you saw Sally Jesse Raphael blowing a gorilla, would you stop and take pictures or report it as animal abuse and arrest the gorilla? Well Hand of Fate sticks you right into that kind of choose your own adventure. Except it involves cards, fighting, a freaky looking storekeep, and a good deal of luck. So it's exactly like your Ukrainian wedding without the soul shattering guilt and shame at the end. Let's break it down. Basically, you play a choose your own adventure created from the deck of cards you have and grow that deck by playing. Each time you play the deck, it grows as you succeed and then you can keep a certain number of cards in your hand which are shuffled and laid out a little like a playing board as each level increases and you go forward. Still with me? Okay, then sometimes you fight, sometimes you meet store owners, sometimes you do good deeds, and sometimes you find a court card which is it's like finding that one Monopoly piece you lost 10 years ago. For a second, you're like, yes, then you can't figure out why you're so happy about it. Just like the Donner Party in Jessica Simpson's life, everything in the game revolves around food. If you run out, the game's over, but taking turns eats up food, doing almost anything eats up food. It's a vicious cycle, really, and there's no $14.99 a week plan to get out of it. Graphics are up first. For a game that's $24.99 and an alpha, the graphics are good, not great, not sit back and gently rub your navel awesome, but tangible and easy on the graphics card with a good share of locations and special effects. It doesn't feel as low rent as it could. This is the game equivalent of Emma Rossum, where it flashes between classy and trashy faster than you can change the tabs to parent safe websites. Sometimes it looks great, but every once in a while, perspective makes you go, gah, egads. Overall, it has a fable feel, and since the game is still technically in an alpha sort of way, it could have a couple fixes. Sound, music, and voice. Sound is where it's supposed to be, and the only thing that I hope they add is some environmental sounds when you're playing the choose your own adventure parts, but it's not actually in the levels and is just more text. If I save a bird's egg or give food to a starving man, I want to fucking hear the dude's stomach rumble or something, because it's sort of weird just reading text quietly, like I'm in a DMV surfing porn or something strange like that. But overall, the sound is actually rather well done. Music. I like it. It's not a lot, but it fits great and it's done very well. In fact, even after playing, I was humming the main theme song for some damn reason. Simple, but well done. I haven't hummed the theme song in a game in quite a long time. Voice. You know, there isn't much except for screams, and it's been a couple weeks since I saw the Transformers movie, but I assume people in agony and pain still sound somewhat the same when they're screaming. Their narrative is perfect, but doesn't really narrate everything, and I'm not sure if that'll be patched, but as the game gets closer to a real launch, I'd like it to be. If they do end up adding more narrative, this will be that one game that ends up being more like a D&D board game than most D&D board games, which is like your porn suddenly becoming real. It's a dream of nerds everywhere. Even though, let's be honest, realistically, probably not that cool. Gameplay. As I explained, the more you adventure, the more cards you get, and you can choose to have them in your hand and the further you can go. At the end of each of the dungeons is a court card, and as you progress, you can have more cards in your hand and more equipment too, finding both as you explore, so the levels sort of grow. Now, it can be a bit weird restarting mostly from scratch each time you play, but this is more HeroScape than D&D, and just remember that. However, that being said, I found myself drowning in options quickly, instantly falling in love with the overall gameplay. The fighting engine is a mix of Fable and Batman, which is indeed like mixing cold shit with hot buttered rum, but somehow it comes out working fairly well here with dodges, leaps, blocks, and tons of effects going on fairly without a hitch as you progress. It is not perfect. It is a little bit laggy at times, but overall it is really well done for a game that's doing what this game is doing. So what do you get with Hand of Fate? Well, the game is really as long as hell, and I know that. The more you play, the longer the levels get, the harder they get, and the longer and hard it is to get through them, long and hard. Yep, that's a joke there, just waiting to happen, isn't it? But like Peter North, there are a couple problems involving aim. At times while fighting, I did notice that button presses I had hit counted, but they counted a bit later than I wanted. Almost like a tiny bit of leg was introduced, but I couldn't find that in the video counter or in the footage. Also, the control scheme is just a bit wonky, with the controller working in fights but not in the menus, another sign that this is an early access game and you just need to be prepared for it. But at $24.99 it's my job to tell you if it's worth getting. So I rate games on a buy, wait for sale, rent, or never talk about it again rating scale. And as a pre-release early access game, I don't think I need to change that scale for this game. The fact is, for me, this is a buy right now with a couple caveats. 
If you have an issue with everything not being perfect in your games, you might want to wait. But if you can handle a little bit of jank, it's actually an excellent game. That's right. Despite it being an alpha, the game was worth the money easily. The atmosphere, gameplay, and heart of the game shone through quicker than I had expected. And I ended up falling in love with the basicness of it. How much it reminded me of the years back when I was younger, got morning erections, and played these kind of games on a board. Now, Defiant Development has actually made me suggest people look at buying a fucking early access game and I never saw that coming. It's normally not what I look at but for Patreon somebody asked me to do it and I decided to look and I have to say I was surprised. So this is Carrick saying thanks for watching and listening. If you liked the video hit like. If you disliked it hit dislike. Check the Kickstarter and the Patreon if you can. As this is our first Patreon sponsored look at the game I have to thank them specifically for keeping us going. Peace out bitches.